G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Media here. We are back on the Wild's Redstone Test World to address an injustice. If you wanted to learn more about the fundamentals of Wild's Redstone so you can understand what is actually going on here, be sure to check out my previous video covering the topic in detail. At the end of that video, I briefly introduce this binary encoded wireless redstone telemetry system that you can place down anywhere in your world and have multiple modules communicating with each other. The only problem is that I didn't have much time to talk about this particular machine in detail. So just a quick refresher, what we have here is four separate enderpearl stasis chambers on three separate wireless telemetry modules. So we have four stasis chambers here, four over here, and another four over here. At each one of these stations, the player is presented with these two lecterns. The lectern on the right selects the location of the module you want to communicate with. So we can have anywhere from one up to 15 different wireless telemetry modules in different locations of the world. So right here we only have three. One, two, and three. Meaning we are only using the first three pages of this lectern. This lectern on the left then selects which one of the four enderpearl stasis chambers we want to select. So we can select up to 15 different locations and up to four different enderpearl stasis chambers per location. Giving a quick demonstration, all I need to do is open up the lectern. We're currently at station number one. Let's say we want to go to station number three. At station number three, I'll then select stasis chamber number two, send the signal. All of our modules will receive the signal but only the one with the correct binary encoding will be triggered. As you can see, we are now at destination number three and we selected enderpearl stasis number two. So that's cool. I demonstrated all of this in my previous video. However, a lot of you started to experience problems with the wireless telemetry being unreliable. When I investigated the reliability issue, I found out that the root cause was due to the items inside of these chambers not behaving correctly. So here what I've done is slowed things down so we can see in more detail how these items are behaving. As I explained in the previous video, these items are what we use to transmit the wireless signals. And the wireless signals are transmitted based upon what game tick these items begin to fall relative to each other. This process is extremely complicated, so be sure to check out the previous video for a full explanation. Keeping an eye on these items and then activating extreme behaviors, what we've essentially done is made it so that the random momentum given to the items from the droppers is now amplified to their extremes. And what we should see very soon is our reliability issue occurring from the items getting just the wrong kind of random momentum that causes them to glitch out. Well, that's irritating. I know that there is an issue, but I can't seem to replicate it. Nonetheless, I've had this issue occur when working with Wireless Redstone on numerous occasions and I managed to come up with a simple solution. My solution was to simply halve the speed of this daylight sensor clock to give the items more time to rest on the trap doors before we check them for their ticking order. In order to actually halve the speed of this clock, all I've got is a monostable which cuts the amount of pulses coming out in half. However, this introduces another problem. You see, in order to successfully send a transmission, both your transmitter and the receiver have to send the signal at the exact same moment. So, the pulse given out by the clock on your receiver has to be perfectly in sync with the clock that you use on your transmitter. However, if you are only receiving every second pulse from the daylight sensor clock on your receiver and you only give a single pulse from your transmitter, 
there's a 50% chance that the transmission will not be received. Some of you should be smart enough to guess the solution already. However, the funny thing is that this problem had me stumped for quite a while. That is, until I realized that the solution is to obviously just send two pulses from the transmitter and so one of them is at least guaranteed to be received. God damn it. But now, with the clock speed halved, and our items getting more time to rest, and our transmitter sending two pulses, our binary encoded wireless telemetry system should now be 100% reliable. With that out of the way, let's now take a look at our binary encoding. This is by far one of the most interesting mechanisms that you can make with wireless redstone. Because unlike my previous telemetry systems that have one channel dedicated to one receiver, what we have here is multiple transmitters and multiple receivers all capable of receiving the same binary signal. Then depending on how you arrange these observers inside of the encoder, you can control specifically which modules respond to what binary numbers. Unfortunately, in my previous video, I didn't get into too much detail about how these binary encoders work. So I got a lot of questions on how to actually set them up. All I've done here is sliced off the top part of the encoder so we can see the encoding underneath. What we have here is these first four bits are dedicated to the particular location of a module. So this line of white concrete right here indicates that this entire module has been assigned to a value of one in binary. Because we have our first bit, which represents one, our second bit, which represents two, our third bit, which represents four, and our fourth bit, which represents eight. Wherever we have the white concrete indicates that we include that bit. Wherever there's an observer, we exclude that bit. So adding everything up, we get one plus zero plus zero plus zero again means that this module has been given the number one. This also means with four bits dedicated to the number of the module, our largest possible number that's a non-zero is one plus two plus four plus eight which is equal to 15, which is exactly how many modules we can assign with this telemetry system. So as well as these four bits to indicate which module we want to select, we have these two bits at the end, which are dedicated to the number of the endopel stasis chamber. An important nuance to point out is that in terms of these first four bits designating the location of the module that we want to select, our zero value is completely unused, meaning the minimum number that we have is one. However, for our endopel stasis chambers, we have two bits describing four endopel stasis chambers, meaning that we have a value of zero, one, two, and then one plus two, which is three. So speaking strictly in binary, our very first endopel stasis chamber as a value of zero, then the next one is one, then two, then three. This might be kind of confusing given that the numbered one to four inside of the lectern, but this is simply because we're more comfortable counting in non-zero values than we are including zero as a countable number. However, if we look at the four bits dedicated to the number of the module, this entire module is number one, this one over here, is two, and this one over here has been given the number three. So making sure this lines up with what we would expect, we count one plus zero plus zero plus zero equals one. Then over here, we count zero plus two plus zero plus zero is equal to two. And then for our last module, we've got 1 plus 2 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 3. So let's say I wanted to quickly set up a number 4. All I'm going to do is quickly copy this with Lightmatica, like so. 
paste in our number 4 in a random location like so. And now if I go down to where the encoding is, currently this has been given the same number as the number 3 that we copied. We want to go ahead and give this a number 4. So our 4 digit is this one right here. So we want this to be concrete. And then we want to set the 1 and 2 values to 0. And now, this stasis chamber right here, this whole module has been given the number 4. Testing it all out from our number 3, I'm going to go into the lectern. Select number 4. Select stasis chamber number 1. Hit send. And I should be teleported over there almost immediately. Okay, that did not work. For some weird reason, this particular module in this particular location is not actually receiving any signals. Unfortunately, just when you think you've figured out everything there is to know about a mechanic, Minecraft goes ahead and throws a spanner at you. It turns out that the transmitter does seem to be able to send signals. So if we have a look at this over here, yep, we've gone ahead and sent the signal. So the transmitter in this location works. It's actually the receiver that's not responding. So if I send the signal, yeah, the receiver's not doing anything. Okay, this problem is now driving me absolutely insane. I just pasted in all of these modules around this location. So all of these are assigned to number 4. I just triggered them all at the same time. So all the enderpearls landed at the same moment. And it crashed my game! When you end up crashing Minecraft of what you're doing, then you know you're doing something pretty cursed. So if I go ahead and get up this signal. It gets received by every single one of these. There we go. But not this for some reason. Oh my god. Is it possible? No way. No freaking way. Oh my god. If you don't mind me, I'm just gonna, you know, take a dip into the void. Alright, a thousand years of pain and suffering aside, this is now working properly in the exact location I pasted it originally. So it turns out it wasn't a locationality issue. As usual, it was a case of Lightmatica for some reason randomly deciding to delete blocks in the schematic. This is an important lesson not to be too reliant on your tools such as Lightmatica in order to build. Because sometimes you need to apply your brain and realize that something is not quite right. So what were we doing again? Oh right, I was demonstrating how simple it is to increment the binary encoding to incorporate new enderpearl stasis chambers into your network. Another common question that I got was how to expand the number of bits that you can communicate with. So in this particular case we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bits that we can communicate using our wireless network. However, theoretically our protocol should allow any number of bits to be transmitted. So what I want to do for you now is go ahead and build up an extension of this wireless redstone receiver that can operate on the maximum amount of bits possible. To start with as a template, I'm going to grab a schematic of the existing system. There we go, all we have left here is the receiver as well as the encoder. What we want to do is expand the amount of bits that we can transmit as much as possible. Going into the guts of the system, our main bottleneck is going to be this rail right here which sends the block updates to these droppers indicating when a bit is sent. So our main limitation here is going to be the length of these rails dictating the amount of bits that we can have. We will also need to carefully choose the tile sets that we use. 
For each bit that we want to send, we need two sets of repeaters, and so... We can't actually use this particular tile set unless we reduce the amount of bits that we want to send. Making a choice for the limit of amount of bits that we want, I'm going to say that 10 bits should be good enough for any system, as that gives us 1024 different numbers. And here we have our tile set. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bits. And then the last set of repeaters will be our reference point in order to send our communications. There we go, now I'm grabbing the transmitter. All I'm doing is just taking a schematic, cutting it out, and then moving it over to where I can nicely line everything up. This of course makes everything easier to process and follow. Now I can grab the tile set, like so, copy it up, and simply paste it on top. So these repeaters are the channels for our individual bits. These additional repeaters allow us to separate the network that our machine is running on. So right now, because I copied it directly from those modules over there, Currently, this is part of this network. If I wanted to change that, all I need to do is simply change these repeaters. And once we have a new tile set, like so, we've now defined a new network for this telemetry to run on. Ah, so here's a slight problem. Our rails are now slightly too long in order to be powered for our encoder to work. In order to fix this, I'm just going to take a schematic of this side of the encoder and then move it to the other side. So now, both sides essentially function in a similar way. So now when I trigger this note block, we should see, seeing that we have no numbers encoded in here, all these rails should turn off. Yep, they turn off briefly. So now we are able to send signals on 10 bits. This right here is going to be our reference point. Taking a close look at the timings, we have this hopper being read by these comparators. Now first, we have a two game tick delay before this dust gets powered, sending our first pulse. Then after two game ticks, we send another pulse, and once again, a third pulse. There we go, this should replicate that timing. So if I throw an item into this hopper, we get the three pulses going into our rail. There we have our tile set. We also want to have the repeaters for our network. And this circuit is what opens our trap door and allows the item to fall, which should provide the reference point for all these items that fall. When I trigger the system, It should all trigger at the same time, and no activation of our encoder. Perfect. And finally, we can add our daylight sensor. This will be the clock that keeps everything in sync. And now, we're cooking. Here we have the transmitter module. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the tile set for our transmitter. Drop it in. And I want to make sure I just flip it around. Make sure that it's in the correct orientation. Because the transmitter is reversed. We also want to change this tile set to include our transmitter in the same network as our new 10-bit receiver. I've just got a really rudimentary interface, so each one of our levers represents a bit. We can activate one of them, send a signal, we'll then transmit, and as you just saw, our encoder received the transmission. Let's say we wanted to specifically send a number to our encoder, well first we need to set up the encoder. Alright, 
Every single bit has been covered with an observer except for a bit corresponding to one. If I select this bit and transmit, you should hear the note block. Ah, I'm an idiot. Because I reverse direction, this is now corresponding to that bit. So if I transmit this one, Yep, we hear the note block. If I activate any other bit, it should now suppress it and we should no longer hear the note block. Perfect. There we have it. The ability to send wireless transmissions anywhere on your server. I hope you enjoyed following the methods that I take to design my contraptions. And if you wanted to take a gander at these machines yourself, Take a look down in the description for a well download. In the meantime, I'll be working on putting a lot more content out in the coming weeks. So be sure to subscribe to be notified when new videos go up. And I will see you then.